Hello everyone, I'm Dennis and I'm making my own CPU, which is a 8-bit small CPU stack machine based on just the standard gates and a couple of multiplexers and encoders, so no FPGA, just the technology from 70s. I already built a lot of models for my CPU, so I already have my instruction set architecture documented. I already have emulator and assembly tool. I already have ALU model, the primary stack, and now it's time to work on the register file. And yes, this is the stack machine. Technically, I don't need a register file, but I would like to have one, because the density of, my, of the code in my CPU is pretty low, so constantly loading values to the RAM and reading them back would be too complicated. So I would like to have some stash for my values. So I plan to have a 15 registers to register file. And I think it's time to start working on it. I have several commands which are operating those registers and my register file works into modes. The direct mode, like for storing values and reading values from the register file. And for the indirect addressing mode, when the value in the register file is considered to be an address in the memory, not just the value, like a pointer. And even more, for that indirect mode, I have special registers, so one sort of my registers, registers from R1 to R5, will automatically get decremented every time I use them in the indirect mode. And the upper sort, like registers R11 to R15, will be automatically incremented. I don't want to do those increments and decrements explicit in code, because I have just 256 bytes of program memory, and I would like to be able to do the typical tasks like reading sequence from the RAM or writing sequence from the RAM. So I need those uh, increments and decrements to happen automatically. How do I implement it? Uh, let me start a new circuit. I will call it register file. Uh, the input will be X out. Definitely I need an X out because I'm storing the values from the X register. So the X output, output of the X register, X out, is connected to the input of my registers. And opposite, I'm going to connect it to X in, because I would like to update my X register from my register file. So on the input I have X out, on the output I have X in, both of them are 8 bits, plus I'm going to put another one output. I'm not using it right now, but I will need it in the future for the in direct mode, address out. Having those outputs, I can start putting my registers. And uh, last time I discussed that there are two kinds of registers. Well, there are several kinds of registers. There are lots of registers, but in my case, uh, the main difference is that I ha may have some flip-flops and they constantly read their value on each cycle update. So you need to feed them a new value on each cycle for the storage registers. Uh, that only update their value when they are allowed. So they have a write enable input and if this input is set to zero, the value is stored, whatever value on the input is, or maybe there will be no in value at all. I'm going to use the second kind of those registers and in my physical implementation, my registers will have output enable pin, which I don't have for the logic sim register. So I'm going to simulate it by putting a pair of a register plus controlled buffer and I need 15 of those buffers. So I just pick up the register, I pick up the buffer and copy it and copy and copy and copy it till I get 16 then I can remove the lower one. So that's my registers. Uh, I need to connect them and as all the registers can get the value from the X, I need to connect X out to the input of all my registers and vice versa. I need to connect the output like of my buffer, but technically of my register, back to the X in and to the address out in the future. That's how you make a register file. How do I control the register file? What should I do with it? Um, I have a register ID as a part of my opcode, like the register number from 0000 to 1111, four bits number that can address 16 registers. I already know that I have a circuit known as a decoder, so I can use like 4 to 16 decoder, and I will fit my decoder 
with the register ID and connect all the outputs of my decoder to the right enable. Except output number zero. I don't want my registers to react to the register number zero because register number zero doesn't exist at all. Plus, I need a second decoder. I need a second decoder for the outputs. So this way I can control both inputs and outputs and either connect uh, the proper register to the input or to the output based on the ID. One option is to use the end logic and gates, but the better option will be to use the output enable pin of the decoder. So for example, if I would like to write something, I need to set a register ID plus enable the output of the right side decoder. Same for the read side decoder that controls just the buffers. And that's how you implement everything for the direct mode. Like you control two decoders for the write part and read part and you control the output of those decoders with the register ID and enable bits, which is like read and write. What should I do next? In direct mode. In direct mode is a little bit more complicated because in the indirect mode, if the register ID is zero, the address should be taken from the register Y, which means I need a Y input, like I need Y out as an input to this model, so it will be connected to the Y register, and I need to create some kind of a bypass, like if register is zero, the Y should be connected directly to the address bus, and the X out, but I don't care about it right now. Okay, what else do I have in my register file? I have those increment-decrement operations and I need to somehow detect whether we are incrementing or decrementing. Actually, I need to decrement the value only for first five registers from R1 to R5, skipping R0. So I can go to the any tool on line optimization tool and write a truth table like for first five values, skipping the zero value it should return one, otherwise it will be zero. And when the tool calculates the result, it will be three ends and one OR gate plus several nodes. Just re-implement that salt circuit manually. So I don't need to think how to do it. I just need to write a table and use the solver to give me the circuit for the, for the table. I will connect this circuit to the register ID. So all the time I have selected register between one and five inclusive it will produce one, otherwise it will produce zero. Uh, yes, it will make additions for the register that shouldn't be touched, but we can just mask them later. What else? I have my decoders, uh, but I'm not either reading or writing, so I need to somehow bypass my um, read and write gates, like read and write output enables. If I have indirect op, so I need a new control pin indirect op, and I will just OR that control pin and direct op with both uh, read and write pins. So if I have indirect op, the selected register needs to be read and written simultaneously. And both of those inputs and outputs will be connected to my add sub model, which will be controlled by this control increment decrement control logic. So it will automatically get incremented or decremented. Well, that's almost it. I can jump to the add sub, but actually I would like to first add clock and reset. I discussed clock and reset signals last time in my previous video, but I will quickly repeat it. So I need a reset to reset the values of all my registers after power up. So because you, when you power up, you don't know what will be the state of the register. You need to get them to some predefined state, which will be all zeros. And uh, all zeros is not by coincidence a knob command for my CPU. Uh, as for the clock, the reason is that signals don't propagate instantly. And when you put some signal on the input of a circuit, you have to wait for the circuit to process your input and stabilize the output. And clock allows you to like wait for that. It controls like, how long do you wait and do you, are you waiting enough? That's why we have those global clock and reset signals everywhere when we have a registers where we store some values. 
Uh, they are pretty simple, they are just coming to that part of the circuit and are connected to the respective clock and reset pins of both registers and having them I can just check how it works quickly so I can reset all the values mm, I can probably select some register uh, I can set some value on the input like on the X out let's change it from just zeros to something else uh, I can enable the right operation and do a clock cycle and this is a good example like why you need a clock cycle Be till I do the clock cycle nothing is updated so I have some time to stabilize the signal. Okay, I do the clock cycle. Uh, the value in the register is updated. So now I can connect that register to the output by setting read pin to one. And yeah, I need to turn off the write pin and I need to turn on the read pin. And the output is set to the content of this register. That's exactly what I would like to have. I can also check if I can reset it and yeah, it will become a zero. It looks like it works in direct mode. Uh, it will definitely work in indirect mode, but I'm still missing my increment decrement logic. My initial plan being to reuse the ALU and do some logic on top of the ALU to switch it between the CPU and register file, but this became too complicated. So I thought, okay, I will just copy my ADSAP model. Yeah, that's more work during assembly, but that's much cleaner design. So I will put my add sub model here, another one. Uh, it has a signal of add and sub, which is surprisingly exactly same. Well, it's not surprisingly, I planned that. Exactly same at the output of my control logic of increment decrement. So it will switch between incrementing and decrementing. One of the operands is connected to the output of the register bus. And another one will be just one. That's the constant of one, so we'll be either adding one or subtracting one. That's all. And the output of it goes to the input of the registers, but I cannot connect it directly to the register input bus. I cannot connect it directly to the XOUT network because XOUT is constantly connected to the X register. So there is always a signal here. It's constantly fed from X register. So I will use a multiplexer and I will choose what goes to my registers by the multiplexer, whether it goes from the X or whether it goes from the add sub model. And this way, that's why it's safe to constantly do adds and subs because you only allow add sub model to switch to the add sub input when you have indirect operation because I'm going to set indirect pin to control also my multiplexer. And that's it. That's the whole model. Um, I can start using it. I can start testing it. I need to write a test bench. I hate to write test benches, but I need to write one. But that's not yet all. As initially I planned to have some logic on top of the ALU, my ALU is constantly pro producing uh, operation result, which is not it's supposed to do because it's directly connected to the X in bus right now. I planned it to be connected to some logic that will switch it and gate the bus, but I don't have this logic anymore. So because of this, I need to put a buffer, controlled buffer on the output of my ALU and control it with some kind of ALU operation pin. For example, I already have that pin in my oh, stacker. Oh yeah, in my primary register, in my stack register, I already have a pin like binary operation, unary operation and ORing of those two operations gives you like just an ALU operation. So if this fourth signal like fourth bit is set, I will enable the output of the ALU, like gating it or ungating it if needed. This way my ALU becomes safe to be connected to the uh, X in bus and will be able to participate in that bus safely. Oh, and now I'm done. And as I'm speaking of the, this bus, I can probably start connecting my units. I can probably start connecting my models to the final CPU. But I already have stack, I already have register file, I already have ALU, that's three models. Uh, they have some shared buses. So let's connect them to each other. And I will also connect the global clock and reset signals for them. 
that will go externally because uh, even for this simulation I will also need some memory I will also need some program memory and uh, random access memory for the programs and I will generate some external signals for clock and reset in my hardware they will be generated well memory will, will be emulated and all of those signals will be generated uh, by external support hardware which will not be based on case that will be a microcontroller I'm building just a CPU in this project. Uh, all, the, all the other inputs, they are uh, control inputs, so they will be fed from my fetch and decode logic, which I don't have right now. And uh, I think I will finish my decode logic as a last model. But for the next video, I think I need to work on the memory access model, plus fetch model, plus probably branching. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.